Show. Matt G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko. Henda, Varmini, welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill. My name is Meg G. And uh, since you guys liked the first roundtable we did, we decided let's do another one. Why not? Uh, so during the week, I hit up uh, some of my celebrity friends uh, to see, you know, if we can talk about things that are impacting young people at the moment. Well, not even at the moment. These things have been impacting us for a very long time. I'm talking about the impact of alcohol abuse, uh, mental health. So I hit up uh, Loisa McDonald, uh, Tabang Mulaba, Nkanyezi uh, Kupeka, Natasha Tahane, and uh, lastly, the Director of HIV Prevention Strategies at the National Department of Health, Dr. Tato. Uh, they're all going to be joining me in the next hour as we chat about all those things that um, young people are facing right now. So yeah, big shout out to Love Life for making this possible. The Department of Health, BWISE, Soul City Institute. It's going to be an awesome show. Buckle up. Let's get straight into it. All right, please welcome my guest, this guy, like, if you don't know him, I don't know where you've been living. You've probably been living under a rock because he's a talented DJ, he's a social media entrepreneur, he's a radio personality, he's a brand influencer, he's an artist manager. Please welcome Nkanyezi Kupek. How are you, my brother? Drum roll, yay! <laughs> I'm good, Mac G. How are you, my bro? <laughs> I'm great, man. Is there anything you haven't done, dog? Yeah, hey, you haven't been on TV? Is that the only thing you're missing? <laughs> I think, yeah, that, that's the only thing I need to get on to. It's TV, yeah. TV, everything else, yeah. And how you, how you been doing, man? How's the family? How's the corona treating you? Yo, man, I've been good. I've been healthy. I've been staying indoors, sanitizing, you know. And, hey, the corona has been messed up. But what we can you say? We just have to follow the rules and stay healthy, you know. Uh, one thing I like about you is that you're always trending. Whenever I'm on my timeline, I always see your stuff. And recently <laughs> I saw a video uh, that you posted of Mandela. Yeah. Tell me about that video, man. That was a very inspirational video, man. We have to speak frankly about HIV AIDS. This is exactly what we did when we fought about it. And that could only be done by being outspoken to talk frankly about sex in order to save the life and future of our children. Will not destroy, but will actually strengthen our culture. We love our children enough for us to talk about sex. Um, you know, man, I was uh, just, I'm always online. I'm always checking out stuff, interviews and videos. And since it's Mandela month, I came across um, uh, the, the video that I shared. Um, Mandela speaking about uh, young people and sexual health and for them to always remember to go and test and know their HIV AIDS status. And I felt, you know, since, you know, we're living in times where people, you know, learn things fast and they want to try things fast and they have multiple partners, you know, and people are open about it on social mm -hmm. media. I was like, let me actually share uh, this video because it's, it's, it's something that we need to keep reminding people of, you know? Yeah, I think you should share it to Will and Jada. Yeah, they, they, they really need it right now. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm going to tag them on that. I'm going to tag them on that. Since they're encouraging such things, I'll tag them on that. <laughs> now, everybody knows that Mandela was the epitome of cool and he spoke openly about sex. What's your stance as Nkanyezi on, on Tlof Tlof? Yo, look. Um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't, you know, sugarcoat things. I know as young people that we love doing everything we love experiencing everything you know and um i like encouraging people that they should go test they should know you know they should stick to one partner man come on you know and um that they should actually practice safe sex and it's fun it's fun so it, it it's something that you and your partner need to you know talk about learn each other don't go outside looking for other things you know what i'm saying mm. <laughs> so you've never you've never looked for other things ever <laughs> I always 
You know, the only time I look for other things, man, it's 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 advice. Yeah. <laughs> and the shoulder to lean on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Uh, and lastly, just to talk about the video, man, he touched Mandela touched on HIV. Um, do you think, as young people, we're doing enough to protect ourselves, uh, not just from the coronavirus, but also from the HIV virus because it's still rife? Yeah. Um, you know, honestly speaking, from my experience and what I've seen, I think you know um, a lot of people who are. Uh, um, a lot of people who don't have internet access or who don't have, um, you know, TV access, media access, rather. Um, those are the people that are actually still facing the problem and the pandemic of, you know, not being able to know more about the status, more to know more about HIV AIDS and to know, to, to actually know that you can actually live, you know, and practice safe sex because, the people that have internet and the people that have access to media, you know, they read about these things, they learn about these things, they debate about these things every day. So I feel the other side that doesn't have access, it's the, that's where we still need to fight and, you know, bring more info to those people. No, I totally agree, man. And then as a DJ, do you miss Groove? Ish, me, I miss Groove, bro. Fuck. Bro, bro, ish, bro. Like, I miss Groove a lot. <laughs> so every time I see these online gigs happening, you know, I'm like, ish, yeah, I see it's online, but it was going to be different if we were at Groove, eh? <laughs> and, and, and before Corona at Groove, did you ever witness people bala sara? Yo, that's the biggest situation that I always post about. Um, we get young people who experience groove for the very first time. I don't know. Probably it's excitement. You know, we get people who drink a lot, who cannot limit, um, you know, the, the, the intake of alcohol. And it happens that it, end, it ends up in a situation, and, you know, that's one thing you don't want to find yourself in a situation at and. It happens. It happens a lot, bro. Festivals, clubs everywhere. It's one of the biggest problems we have. And as a DJ, when you see someone at Groove Alasa, what, what do you do? Like, do you help them out? Do you call the, the security? What do you do? Um, you know, because of things like jealous boyfriends and <laughs> and people thinking, oh, what's he? hey, now are you trying your luck on someone? Mm. Um, I, I, I try not to engage myself with a stranger, you know, but one thing I do is I tell, um, I tell the bouncers or the security and just let them know with yo, um, if I know you, I'll call you an Uber, but if I don't know you, you know, I'll, I'll get someone to try and help you, especially if someone works at the particular place uh, or the club or whatsoever. And then, yeah, cause hey, sometimes you try and help someone and then the story changes tomorrow. So, mm. you know, it's tricky. You don't it find tricky. Yourself, hey bro, you don't mm. want to find yourself in such situations. So if I see you, Mundo La Chile, I try and get them help. Yeah. Okay. So I'm at Groove. Kanye's is rocking. He's killing it. Party's lit. I start indulging in alcohol more than I anticipated. Now, as someone who's, you know, in the entertainment industry, what would you recommend I do personally? Yeah. Um, one thing that I, 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 I tell young people to actually learn and practice is that if you're going to go to Groove, never go alone. You know, there's always have to be a partner, a partner in crime, that friend of yours that you trust, you know, because sometimes you have too much fun at Groove. Sometimes you have, you know, too much to drink. And then and, and other people, you know, it, 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 it happens that they cannot control their alcohol intake. And that's a very dangerous thing to do. Yeah. So for you to be safe the next time you go out or just hang out with, with friends, make sure that you never alone. So that's one thing I encourage because you never know. Sometimes we have too much fun. Next thing, so there's not a single person around, you know, so you don't want to find yourself in such situations. So always make sure that you, you have friends around and, there must be someone there who doesn't drink, man. Come on. Yeah. Doesn't even, you know, <laughs> get overexcited. Yeah. yeah. Naive, nah, man. And who's that person for you? <laughs> I think that's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
no, no, no. I, 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 I have friends who I have friends who actually make sure that everybody gets safe. You know, nice. uh, we could be tired, we could, it could be fatigue, but there's always friends around to make sure that. Uh, we home safe, yeah. And thank goodness for Uber, man, because also, you know, you can just take an Uber and go home, you know? Yeah. It is that simple these days. So thank you so much to Uber because, hey, without Uber, I don't know how we were going to survive. So Uber, Uber, people need to start believing in Uber, hey? Mm. Uber is the best driver, not your friend, because your friend sometimes takes a shot that doesn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then takes a shot yeah. left on the road. <laughs> You don't want that situation. You don't want that situation, yeah. Nonkanyizi, thank you so much for joining me, man. Just in closing, do you think that young people use alcohol uh, to deal with the pressures of life? And there's so much going on right now, you know, whether it's anxiety, depression, etc. You know, one thing we need to know is that young people are curious and young people always want to try new things and experience uh, new things and look cool. So people do take alcohol, um, you know, sometimes just to have fun. And then it ends up being one of the things that actually takes control of them. And, you know, it is a serious problem. It is a big problem that we are facing as a country because alcohol abuse is one of the biggest pandemics that we have. And um, a lot of people run to it for problems. Um, I've experienced that with close friends as well. They run to it every time they have stress or they're going through a lot or it's unemployment and they find every single cent they have, um, you know, they indulge in alcohol and get lost in it. So it's one of the things that I think the country is still trying to fight. And if you know someone who, who's you, you feel they are an alcoholic because you know, people who take a lot of alcohol never admit that they're alcoholic. So uh, I think you should, you know, step in and try to help them because a lot of young people, you know, find alcohol exciting and they never get to admit that, you know, it's controlling them. All right, cool, man. Kanye Zikubega, thank you so much for joining, man. In closing, anything else that you just want to add on this topic? Um, I just want to say people need to take care of themselves. People need to know their status. People need to have lots of fun after COVID, but just make sure to stay safe and stay healthy. And, and how are you paying the bills, man, since there's no more gigs? Yo, bro. <laughs> I, I'm, now I'm, I'm, I'm straight into my savings now. And then, yeah, I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to sell things left, right, and center. But you know what? I trust I trust the process that we're going to fight this thing and gigs are going to come back soon. Yeah. All right. No, gigs will come back. And hopefully when I see you next time at gig, never will last. <laughs> no, I'll make sure. I'll make sure I don't do that, bro. Thank you so much, King. All right. Cheers, brother. Send us a please call me today to 083-323-1023, wherever you are, and we will get back to you. Hashtag mental health matters. Hashtag love life ZA. Love life powering the future. All right, so my next guest uh, needs no introduction at all. She's done so many shows, I've lost count. How are you doing, Natasha Tahane? I'm good. How are you doing? Great, man. <laughs> First of all, uh, congratulations on Blood and Water Season 2. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank All right, you. cool. <laughs> All right, sweet. Listen, uh, let's get straight into it. As uh, someone who works around the world, you know, you do a lot of traveling. Uh, why do you think a young person in, in SA is more likely to abuse alcohol as opposed to like a young person in the States? Um, I don't really want to generalize when it comes to that because I think we're all exposed to alcohol. Um, but the reasons behind that may be different. And like I said, I don't want to generalize because you all come from different backgrounds. Um, some may be um, pressured to drink. Some is just the social environment, um, the lifestyle. You know, um, when they see music videos and all these things being promoted on TV, it's like, oh, this is so cool. You know, so there's definitely different reasons. Um, but let me not say a but. Let me not generalize. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, cool. And what about you personally? Have you been in a situation where you had, you know, maybe too much to drink and then walasa, something like that? Oh, do walasa. <laughs> Yo, um, I started in the business at a very young age. So I started going to the club and being exposed to social environments when I was 
18, 19, already in the business. So you would be working on those days. You'd go to the club because you're working. So it wouldn't really be that. Um, I started really, I experienced that only in the U.S., because we're all students, we're all away from home. So then you see people just trying to go to the extremes, you know, and it's the shots coming. It's like, oh my gosh, we're celebrating. That's what I'm saying, because like we're all, we're all exposed to so many things. Um, but I've got, I've got great friends around me and we all protect each other. We don't go to the bathroom alone, um, especially when you're drinking. But this thing of saying, I'm just going to have one drink and then that's it. That's the problem. With a lot of people. <laughs> I know, just one glass of wine and then it's a whole bottle. Yeah, no, I agree, man. That happens to a lot of people. And do you think there's enough knowledge for young people out there who find themselves in such situations to be able to, you know, get the urgent help they need? I don't think... Things are there. Like, social media has got all these um, people post videos of their friends or people in Javuini who had a drink or two. I would know my Elele, you know, when they had that gathering. Um, so people know what happens when, when you drink alcohol, you, you lose control. And that's one thing that I don't like. I hate not being in control of, my, of what's happening around me and what's happening with me. Um, so people know. People are exposed. We've got cell phones we've got googles in our pockets people know exactly what they're doing when people try alcohol they've seen it whether in Lini or they've seen it in next door people have been exposed to that yeah no 100 yeah. percent. and as we close off mental health awareness month um how do you personally take care of your mental health hmm. mental health is a real issue you know and i think with me being young being in the business and Feeling like there's pressure from family, friends, um, from fans. I've tried to just be centered. You know, I play the piano um, and also just physically. When you start thinking, that leads to overthinking and there's no solution in that. So if I feel like, okay, cool, I'm being overwhelmed. I go play basketball um, or tennis, go tennis court or boxing with my trainer but i tried to be physical more than anything and also the boxing has been helping with dealing with that stress because when you start overthinking you won't get a solution um and also speaking to other people and because i live alone like i always try and speak to my mom try and speak to my cousins and my friends so yeah yeah you're a young person and your fans love you uh what advice do you have to you know uh the youngins out there all those people that might be watching this and really adore you don't let social media rush your goals like take it easy you know there's beauty in waiting and all the little tasks that we have to do all lead to our destiny you know if i didn't go back to school i probably would have been not been able to carry out all the other roles that came with it so wait to be patient i think in king it's with this generation which one thinks to come now 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 and that's what leads us to to depression and also be aware check up on your friends um be aware of how you feel and know that your your feelings are valid everything you're feeling is so valid fantastic natasha thank you so much for joining me all the best with your future endeavors <laughs> uh, i know you've got a busy schedule man so it's an honor to have you on the show thank you so much Richie. sweet here at love life we believe that young people should be given the platform not only to express themselves but also to get in touch with the person that's there to listen and assist them with their every need. This is why our call volumes show that young people reached out to us about relationships, psychological issues, and about sexually transmitted issues. If you've never sent us a please call me, now is a good time, don't you think? 083-323-1023. Powering the future. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by the pretty boys of South African television. I'm talking about Loisa McDonald and Tabang Mulaba. How are you guys doing, bro? All good, all good. Pleasure to be here. All good, man. I'm happy to be here as well, eh? All right. Uh, first of all, I just want to say congratulations, Loiso, on the SAFTA. Uh, Tabang, congratulations on season two on Blood and Water. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, bro. All right, so gentlemen, let's get straight into it. Uh, I want to start off firstly with mental health. Uh, it's a very big issue for young people at the moment. 
Um, how do you guys keep your mental health in check? I'll start with Loiso. Uh, yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, honestly, the, the the thing I found works for me the best currently uh, is just keeping a positive mindset. You know. Um, uh, in everything I do as much as possible. I don't always get it right, but I allow myself to, to kind of uh, trip, if, uh, if, uh, if you will. Um, but no matter what, just try to keep a, a positive mo- uh, uh, outlook on, on, on life in general, you know, um, and protect that positive uh, 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 mindset. Because it's very easy to, especially with the, these days of social media and um, uh, uh, more exposure to so much content from all over the place, uh, and and not all of it being being positive, um, it's very difficult to to kind of stay true to yourself uh, if you're not sure about yourself. So you always back yourself in, in everything you do. Um, I try to stay active; that always helps. Um, as someone who who has suffered with depression in the past. Uh, it's, it's, it's a huge, you, you, you can't even, uh, um, you, you, you can't say it enough how important it is just to stay physically active, mm. uh, and how important that plays on, on, on your mind, um, whether it's strengthening your mind, um, uh, just getting through work, uh, where it can be tough sometimes without work, um, <laughs> There's just so many things, you know, that life throws at you and uh, you, you've kind of got to equip yourself with an arsenal of, of weapons um, that you can use to, to help yourself through it. It could be uh, uh, therapy, uh, talking to friends, having real meaningful conversations with friends, uh, just to offload stuff. Um, that's always a huge thing as well, rather than just soaking everything up and, and sitting with it. So, yeah. And for you, Tabang? <clears throat> Um, I, I do a whole lot of, uh, meditation, which is basically breathing exercises, you know, that helps me a lot. That's one tool that really, really helps me a lot. And I watch a lot of motivational videos, you know, of, of people who are at a certain level that I'd like to be one day. I, I, I listen to their interviews and sort of like figure out well, not figure out, listen to what, to how they made it to, 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 to that point. And I do have lo- uh, a lot of, uh, you know, reading, reading uh, positive books that really helps me a lot. And I, I, I monitor my thoughts uh, a lot, you know. Uh, sometimes they are negative, but the negativity is always... Uh, you know, killed by a positive thought, you know, like you said, he keeps his mind, you know, positive and maintains a positive mindset. So yeah, those are basically the tools that I use to, you know, uh, uh, monitor my, my mental health. And do you guys, uh, dabble in alcohol? (laughs) Uh, I do. I'm not ashamed to admit it. (laughs) (laughs) And you talk about time to time, you know, um, (laughs) And it's, it's weird. It's something I, I kind of, uh, not discovered, but, but something I, I only started partaking in very late in life. You could say I'm a late bloomer like that. You know? um, and uh, yeah, just, just speaking of mental health and alcohol, uh, depression, for example, and alcohol do not mix, right? Um, uh, you know, most, most people know alcohol is a, as a chemical is a, is a depressant. Mm. So if you're in a really negative space, to put it uh, uh, in a simpler term, if you're in a really negative space, stay away from alcohol. Mm. Um, like Tabang was saying, you know, it, rather rather um, uh, surround yourself in more positive things. Read books. Uh, uh, meditation is also a very good, very good tool as well. Um, but yeah, alcohol it's it's a it's a weird thing, man. It it I found for myself where I've had this. You have a kind of up and down relationship with it. Yeah, yeah. It's when when you you're going through a tough time, and uh, the worst thing you do is kind of use it to self medicate. You know, where it's like, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm having a really crap day, and uh, let me just have a few drinks. So you go out and have a few drinks, and uh, it it generally, for me anyway, doesn't end well uh, uh, if if that's my approach to it. 
but if I'm coming from a, a, a more positive uh, frame of mind, um, then yeah, positive things result. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a it's a tricky thing. You have to respect it, um, and and definitely not use it to kind of uh, medicate yourself in, in a way, and and try use it as a tool to make yourself feel better. It, it just doesn't work that way. And you, Tabang, firstly, do you drink? And what's your take on alcohol? Uh, yeah, I do drink, you know. Uh, and my take on alcohol, you know, what's wrong is the abuse of it. You know, if you if you take it, you know, occasionally and, uh, you know, monitor how you, 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 you monitor your intake, then I, you can, you can definitely handle it. You know, you said it ends very badly. All right, cool. And then, uh, since we all, you know, um, partake in alcohol, every one of us here, um, we've got a very big uh, issue in the country right now with regards to alcohol abuse. Um, how do you think we can curb that? What is your suggestion going forward as a nation of how we can, you know, alleviate that problem? Um, yeah, that's that's a very uh, big question, and I think. It, it, it's a symptom of a, a far uh, deeper issue. Um, you know, our, our, our country uh, uh, is going through a lot and has been for a long time, just in terms of uh, social, you know, economically. And you'll find that, that uh, the more a country uh, has those kind of struggles, the more these kind of issues pop up. Um, because people turn to alcohol to, to uh, uh, you know, get their mind off their issues, uh, so to speak. And, and it's not really that simple that, okay, cool, we fix the issues and everybody stops drinking uh, or abusing, abusing alcohol. But I think it's, it's an issue where a lot of people are carrying a lot of issues with it, uh, a lot of stress, a lot of worries, um, a lot of things that they have to look look after in their own lives for their families, and they turn to alcohol to to um, lift their spirits, so to speak. You know, um, and I think I mean we we I, I don't know where we rank currently in terms of drinkers in the world, but I know we rank quite highly, and it seems to be uh, we seems to be uh, uh, getting more and more in terms or bigger and bigger numbers in terms of uh, how much we actually drink. Um, and like you said, the real issue is, is, is it's substance abuse at the end of the day, you know, because like Tavang said, you, 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 can, you can drink um, and have a healthy relationship with alcohol. Um, but the problem is recognizing when you don't have a healthy relationship with alcohol um, and what do you need to do about it. Um, and AA, place, places like AA um, have been long established in helping People who abuse alcohol deal with it. Um, that's always one way to do it. Um, but I, I think it, it, it's not something that we can we can fix overnight. Um, it, it, it really it has to start with the deeper issues in our society, which is sorting out poverty, which is sorting out people getting work, um, being able to fend for themselves, uh, living healthier lives. All of those things, you know. Um, it, it, I think sometimes it's foolish to just focus on, okay, people are, 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 are um, uh, abusing alcohol. We have to ask why that is the case. You know, mm -hmm. get to the deeper issues first and foremost. And generally in most societies, those, those kind of issues tend to, to disappear over time once the deeper real issues are sorted out. No, I totally agree, man. And you, Tabang, uh, what do you think we can do as a nation to stop alcohol abuse? Man, let me tell you, I, <laughs> I, I, I proper prepared for that question, and Loiso <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> instead, of, instead, of, instead, of, instead of, you know, focusing on the abuse itself, we need to take a look at what causes the abuse, you know, the deeper issues that, that people have, you know, each and everyone is, is carrying so much weight, you know, of issues that are from the past, you know, past traumas from upbringing, you know, uh, 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 personal issues that are currently happening, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of things that make, that, that, that make 
uh, people turn to alcohol, you know. So rather than focusing on the abuse itself, we need to, you know, take a step back and sort of like figure out why people turn to that. No, I totally agree, man. And what else do you guys think the healthcare system can do to further assist in this, um, you know, pandemic? Um, yeah, that's that's a that's a tough question. Um, well, I think we'd have to start with what are they doing now, um, and figure out why that's not working. Because clearly, we have an issue, and uh, uh, something something isn't 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 going right you know um honestly i think i think the healthcare system given what we what tabang and i just said uh can't be asked to fix a problem after the problem has mm. has risen do you know what i mean mm. like this isn't something all they'd be doing is put a putting a plaster on 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 mm. a wound that you've already inflicted mm. i think mm. that the the biggest thing that we need to sort out is the the preventative measures and like tabang said as well you know it's 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 dealing with individuals and and what their relationship with alcohol is and i don't think that's the healthcare system's responsibility in a way from from what i've seen there are more than enough uh, avenues for people who do um uh struggle with alcohol abuse to use the system uh, the healthcare system to to aid them, uh, but again, that's after the fact. You know, I think I think we have to focus on on preventative measures, um, and those things are are, are bigger than just uh, the Department of Health. Um, bigger than bigger than any one individual. You know, hundred percent, man. And you, Tabang, um, your role on on blood and water. Um, as of a schoolboy who's exposed to a lot, you know, whether it's drugs, sex, drugs, alcohol, whatever the case may be. How does Tabang save himself? Well, man, I'd like to believe that I'm a very, I'm a very observant person. You know, I, I don't think I, I'd go to the extent to which uh, KB does in terms of, you know, narcotics and drugs and all of that, you know, but I, I, Man, in terms of in terms of those kind of things, I'm really not like the character. You know, I I, I monitor my alcohol intake and and you know, I don't smoke weed totally. I, I really don't. And man, I just it's 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 just a decision with me that yo, I'm not gonna do this. That's how I save myself from you know the character. I guess. I don't know if I answered that question correctly. Do you, do you need me to add on more? Or? No, I think I think he's spot on, man. And I think, you know, hearing you guys, I think you guys should run for presidency because you guys are saints, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, and, and I just want to ask you, Louis, so um, Kachisa on the Queen, he's been immersing himself in the bottle, as we've all seen. How does Louis deal with uh, those kind of situations in your personal space? Um. I think I think Tawang just hit the nail on the head because uh, from what I, I, I was hearing from what he was saying, you you need to have a level of self awareness, yeah. um, and and that's something that only you as an indi- individual can nurture in yourself. Being self aware, you know, um, asking yourself the hard questions, you know, uh, uh, looking after your 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 mental and, and emotional state. Um, and you're right. You, you know the character Gahiso has has always been um, uh, the kind of guy who is not very vocal about uh, his issues. He doesn't really share uh, uh, with uh, a confidant or a friend. I mean, the closest he's had to that is probably his sister. Um, but he, when whenever he's stressed out about something, you you you, you immediately see it in how he, he drinks. Um, and I mean, there's there's plenty of times where you see the character like in the morning, uh, having a, a double shot of, of of whiskey, you know, just to get himself ready for the day. Um, I can honestly say, I think in my own life, I've I've been through that maybe a handful of times, where. I, I ended up being in that kind of space where it's like, yes, if, if I'm going to get through this day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I need something, yeah. you know, and I, I also, I, I don't smoke weed. I used to way, 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 way back. 
Um, but I, I also had to go like, okay, look, this, this isn't really doing anything for me. So just leave it. Fantastic. Um, yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's self-awareness, you know, and I'm, I'm glad Tabang said what, what he did, because that's, that's really the thing that, uh, only you can do for yourself. You know, you have to be aware of, of how you're feeling, um, uh, what's going on in your own head, and be honest with yourself, you know. No, I totally agree, man. Guys, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time to spend with us today. Thank you so much for your wise words. Really appreciate it. Uh, just in, clo- in closing, Tabang, um, you know, what do you want to say in closing to, to the youth out there that, that are watching this? Um, I just want to say that, man, you know what? the youth should be more vocal in terms of their issues, especially at home, because everything, like how you react with people and how you, you, you act socially, you know, basically how you deal with people is a reflection of what's happening back home most of the time. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the youth should be more vocal about the issues and problems they have at home with their parents. It's a very difficult task, you know, because you know our parents, man, they don't really understand these kind of things. So it's a very difficult task, but we we have to start somewhere, you know? So that's the main uh, 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 advice. That's the main advice I have for the youth, you know, just be vocal, speak to your parents, man. Let them know how you feel about certain things. Let them know what you want, because they, they also have a tendency of controlling uh, the direction of, of, of you know, your career and, and where you need to be headed. You know? So they need to be more vocal about those kind of things. I feel like that's where we can all start, you know? 100%, man. I thought you were going to send a shout out to Mops, seeing you the new Mops now. Hey, you're the new ladies man. Eh? Uh, no, Move no, over, no, Mops. No. Tabang's here. Yeah, <laughs> All right, cool, man. Hey, you say in closing, can you say something in vernac for us, please? Because a lot of people say you don't speak enough vernac. So please say your last words in vernac. Uh, in in, in vernac. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why? Why are you put me on the spot like this, man? <laughs> <laughs> Give the people what they want, Cloye. So no, I refuse. Uh, no, no, no. It, it, it's um, yeah. Anybody who knows me knows I, I try my level best, ne? Because uh, I always try to keep keep practicing, and because uh, I'm closer, you know what I mean. So, uh, but I grew up in KZN, so my Zulu is actually better than my Tosa, which is. Let's sad. hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Nah, nah. <laughs> Not really. You'll hear it one day. <laughs> and then you'll be like, damn. <laughs> All right, cool, man. So just in closing on a serious oh, note. I just note. want to say quick, quick first. Uh, yeah. uh, Tabang, congrats, man. Um, yeah, we were actually talking about blood and water just before you came on. And uh, yeah, huge congrats. I worked with this guy, when was it? 20, 2017, I think it was, on The Queen um uh fresh in the game uh nice. you know learning as as he went by and dude you, you, you on a, a on a path to greatness man so just keep going uh um back yourself up at every opportunity you know what i mean thank you so much man i really appreciate that man. and and i don't know if i've told you this i think i have i think i have that i i fell in love with acting while watching you play motello i've told you this man yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, Damn. Yeah. Thanks and for so I feel older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's not intentional. It's not intentional. And then, bro, I promise you, you are like one of the actors in South Africa that I look up to in terms of, you know, like, I don't know what technique you use, but what you're doing, I I, I follow that very much, uh, very much, bro. And I, I really... Like I said, you are one of the actors that I look up to and I look at when I need inspiration on how to play certain, you know, a certain way, bro. Like, shout out. Thank you, Trust bro. me. I, I, you. I look up to you so much, bro. You have nice. No idea. Thank, Thank you, bro. I appreciate I really, I really appreciate your, your words. Thank you, bro. Awesome. Uh, Tabang, when that Netflix check comes in, um, maybe you can get some better Wi-Fi, man. We're struggling to see you, bro. Ah, that's a low, low. <laughs> that was low, low. <laughs> 
the reason why you guys are struggling to see me is because I'm I'm on my laptop. You know, on my phone, I would have been crisp. Yeah, I, yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> no, it's cool, man. Guys, thank you again so much for spending time with us, for your wise words. Uh, good luck with everything that you're doing and all the best in the future, man. Appreciate you guys ta- taking time out for this. Absolute pleasure, bro. All the best. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome SA's favorite YouTube couple, the Nzovus. Yes. <laughs> yes. How are you guys doing, man? We're good. I'm really good. Yeah, and I'm pretty good. How are you doing? I'm great, man. I got to say, first and foremost, I love your channel. I'm such a big fan. I'm one of the thousands of subscribers that you guys have. Big shout out on that channel, man. Thank you. Ah, thank really you. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. All right, so today's topic, we were talking about uglasa. Is this a phrase that you are familiar with? What does it mean to you, uglasa? Uh, what's the translation, just so that we are clear? Because, like, you know, we don't want to go off on a tangent and be thinking other things. <laughs> According to you, what do you think it means, uglasa? Um, direct translation to throw away. Yeah. Uh, um, so I think f- for... Let me speak for myself. I don't want to throw stick from the, under the bus. But I think for, for me, it's like um, like kind of being blasé about things um, and um, kind of nonchalant about doing certain things and the consequences thereof of those type of things that you are doing. So kind of like if I could use it in a sentence, uglashle responsibility or accountability or whatever the case might be. So something like that. And for you, Steph, what do you think it means? Ah, uh, you see, we are one. So, the <laughs> exact same thing. <laughs> I like it, man. And the thing is, whatever you think it means, it happens to the best of us, whether we like to admit it or not. Uh, yeah. Which leads me to my next question. Who laughs us the most in your guys' marriage? Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Wow, that is a really good question. Um, <laughs> I feel like she's about a third shade. Uh, 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 <laughs> I, I, you know what I said? I was like, Stephanie, this is not our YouTube channel. Please behave yourself. So today, I'm honestly on my best behavior, I promise. Okay, let's do this. Uh, you, guys, well, you, you guys can use your fingers to point. Because you know like how on TikTok, they always ask, who is the uh, yeah. list out of Yeah, so I'll ask the question. Yeah. And I just want you guys to point fingers. Who loves us the most in the marriage? <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. I'm, I'm, gonna say I'm shocked. I thought it was going to be you, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. I'm a, so. I'm a laugh larer. She's a laugh larer. All right. Do, do you guys. Not like, they're not deep laugh No. And Dude. do you guys remember the first time you laughed at? Can you tell me about that? Ooh. Um. Probably 2016, maybe. 2016? Mm. So late in life. This is about us, like us together, right? Not like individually. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys laugh that much? (laughs) You see, you see now. Now you expose yourself. Listen, let's okay. (laughs) Let's just wind it back a little bit. You said we must give you what we think it is, and now I'm gonna ask you for the um, what's the word? Uh, The definition. Your definition, so that I can make sure we're answering questions truthfully. Uh, for me, uglasa, it means like, you know, when you are not in control of the situation at the, per, uh, at the present moment because of your alcohol intake. So maybe you drank more than you should have. And now yeah. it's just, it's just, it's, it's lit. It's lit. Yeah. Um, so, so, so when was that with us? I mean, mm. you know, and I know this is going to sound like, uh, really guys, but Hongani and I both. I think it would be probably more about us individually before we got together, because I think that was very much a part of um, how my life was, you know, before I really started to just 
taper it down a little bit. I didn't stop drinking, but I definitely um, understood drinking responsibly a lot better. So that was around the time that we met. So I think maybe like once or twice, but really not something that I can say was a regular thing in our relationship. Yeah. Also because he's not really a big drinker to start off with for the purposes of the fact that he doesn't particularly like the taste of alcohol to start off with. So there wasn't really like um, time in our dating and in our married life that we can like be like, yeah, yo, every Thursday, yo, yo, remember that time we went there. It's really, honestly speaking, um, I think if we were to speak about our individual lives before we met, I could give like, yeah, yeah, I, I, when was the first time and I can count them like this. But from the time we sort of came together and I think we, um, I think, that, yeah, got together, it was far and few in between. And as a young couple, have you had to rescue each other from, you know, a hectic alcohol situation, hectic alcohol night, binge, whatever you want to call it? I mean, like, it's, it's a tough one to... Because, like, when people think rescue, like, you're thinking... Like, you were stranded. <laughs> not, not even, like, stranded, but, like, you are, like, completely plastered, you know, like, like almost like those videos we see circulating on, um, like, recently with, with, like, when the restrictions were let go, mm. um, those, like, that guy at, um, on the street and people were saying, don't video him, nani, yeah. nani. Like, you think that, you're just like, yo, I've never been at that level but obviously there's been times where one of us has had a little too much and it's like yo come on <laughs> let's go to the uber yeah. but it's not like so deep it's like yo bro i don't remember yeah, anything or, or that we happened forget, or, or yeah or now we've never had like um in our relationship um or in our marriage blackout drinking mm. or like stuff where you can be like do you know what you did and i had to wara wara or send random drunk messages and stuff mm. like that we've never had those kinds of things and please by no measure are we like saints because these questions are very much um you're directing them to when we got together as opposed to when we were you know individuals which is a completely different story altogether you know so um, a lot of growing up happened in those times when we were sort of single and all that kind of stuff so i don't think i've ever honestly had to rescue hungani and i don't think also i drive a lot to the places that we would go to socialize so, so i yeah. wouldn't be consuming because anyway I'm just like, hey. so it would mostly be me having my wine but even then he'd never like because it's events and stuff like that and so we've always made sure that we you know want to keep a positive image um and just for ourselves as well we're not trying to have anyone videoing me like passed out over stuff in the elevator. or whatever and besides the video in part just for my own you know values and what i hold in high regard it's just no no i hear you and has alcohol contributed to any problems in your marriage um, not thus far i would say no. and i i hope not <laughs> in the future. i know it's never yeah. been a a bone of contention whatsoever mm. like i say um hungani is not a big drinker i didn't meet him as a big drinker at all obviously i think we've gotten ourselves into situations around certain friends where we kind of maybe feel a bit like oh, just, yeah, like, like, what, why are we here because sometimes you know you feel like maybe a bit more not really pressurized at this age, but just like everyone's, you know, having a good time and all that kind of stuff, but always within certain limitations. And um, I think we have, like, we've never not been, had too much to drink in our marriage, but it's not one that I can say is a, is a problem, is a or, problem has or, or has caused problems where the next day it's like, yeah, let's have a conversation about this drinking of yours or this drinking of mine. You know, it's causing marital issues. Nah, yeah. it's never, never been there. No. Now, now, since you guys are one, what's your take on uh, alcohol abuse? Well, firstly, I, I think it's rooted far deeper than just on wanting to have a drink mm. every day when you come back from work or whatever the case is. Um, and being someone that works in the NGO field of like support victims of 
like abuse and stuff like that it's so evident how different um experiences that have happened or different things that one has been exposed to um can kind of lead someone in the direction of wanting to lean on a bottle um every day in order to cope uh, because it helps them to either go to bed at night so that they can just sleep, wake yeah. up tomorrow, and then go back and face whatever, come back home, drink again so that they can sleep. Um, so I think for me, it's really um, not a, a, obviously it's not a good thing, but I think aside from that, like to not be judgmental towards someone who's an alcoholic um, or abuses alcohol, but to rather try and help them figure out how they got to where they're at if that makes sense. That's yeah, and kind of yeah. Thing. And I think definitely why because a lot of things that in, involve the abuse of any substance um that is a symptom of a root, you know. Mm-hmm. So I've always believed like you know sometimes if you have like a sore throat or a constant headache, it's a symptom. They call it symptoms. And if you just continue treating the symptoms, you don't actually treat the fact that maybe you need antibiotics or it's an infection. So what's the root cause of these things that are, you know, giving you these symptoms? And most times <clears throat> substance abuse, you know, all kinds of substance abuse, um, all kinds of, you know, certain behaviors and stuff like that is really just a symptom of something that has its roots. And so in order to heal from that or, you know, find deliverance from that, you kind of have to search within yourself, get help, do the steps in order to be like, why do I need this? And why is it my crutch? What has taken place? What has happened? Where does it stem from so that I can uproot it so that I can, you know, be a healthy, productive human, I guess. No, I agree with that. Now, Steph, I just want to ask you, um, you've taken a lot of roles where the female is abused by their male partner, uh, yeah. sometimes because of alcohol. Do you think alcohol contributes to the current gender-based violence stats? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, if I were to just bring it back to um, what we said previously, which is that alcohol is, um, or alcohol abuse, let me rather say, <clears throat> excuse me, is a symptom of something that's deeply rooted and sometimes then the manifestation thereof or a lot of times the manifestation thereof um, ends up take you take it out on you know your loved ones mm. or you take it out on those closest to you because you know now you're not in your right frame of mind and and there's so many other things that come as a result of substance abuse you know a lot of the times you have this um well uh, i guess non-caring attitude or whatever the case is and so i do think that it it um plays a large role in gender-based violence i know with my character for example tulu um saul had an uh, like you know an alcohol problem or he drank and he forced her to drink as well to get her drunk for his own agenda you know so i definitely think it does have a role to play and i think history uh, we know of whether it's family members we know of you know where alcohol abuse and gender-based violence are parallel and they go um you know hand in hand um with many cases um of of, of abused victims now, let's talk about COVID-19 and uh, the government regulations on alcohol. Do you agree that the stop in alcohol sales actually helps and will help with the reduction of infections? This one's laughing because in his Yo. personal opinion, he's so happy about this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Let me tell you something, <laughs> Mike G. Let me tell you something. He's so I sick. think with immediate effect is a great thing. <laughs> Now here's why. Now here's why. Um, aside from from like the whole reducing the spread of of the virus and stuff, if we just think of our hospitals, mm. like we really don't need to be having people in the hospital in ER trauma sections right now for alcohol poisoning, for being in fights because people had a young house party and then drinks got too nice and then things went down. Now there's someone who's got a knife in their shoulder or whatever the case is, because then now you are in trauma section. You don't know if the person who just came in before you has tested positive for COVID they haven't had time to do whatever cleaning that happens every hour, every 30 minutes, whatever. Now you're there for drinking too much. Then they put you in a ward where it's a waiting area, Gandhi. 
<laughs> like, like it's just, it's just there's, there's a fine line. And, and mm. for me, I'm just like, it's something that we don't necessarily need. Like, yeah. is your life really like better off with this product than it is without, or then it is not without the product? Like for me, it's just like, when you look at the pros and the cons for me, and I, I keep saying for me, the pros outweigh the cons yeah. by far. And I think it goes back to that thing of why do you feel the need so much to consume? Like mm. you, you, you can chill from, from fast foods for, for, a gang, for a gang amount of time. But now when they say the bottle, you're like, nah, fam, nah. Or now you try <laughs> and find other back routes to, to buying that thing that was 150. Now you're paying 450 for it. And it's just like, is it really worth it? But also with the spread of the virus, um, like on social media, I'm not going to put anyone on blast, but like people post Insta stories, you know, mm. because after a few drinks, now we're relaxed. It's, the vibes are nice. Mm. Now we're seeing everything that's going down from Thursday till Sunday. And you're just like, how are you at so many different people's <laughs> homes? <laughs> All of y'all don't have masks on. You're close, you're hugging, you're yeah. doing this. And it's like, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, and I don't think it's fair, if we're honest. I mean, our frontline workers are, are honestly, you know, putting their lives at risk having to you know be there in the hospitals and this whole thing about with immediate effect is because sometimes you know there's a small group of people who act irresponsibly and then everybody has you know like at school when when there was that one naughty child who now was acting up in class now the whole group is in detention <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's one of i feel like it's one of those cases it's like a minority <laughs> group of people who don't know how to act you know, and now uh, we are all in detention. But it's rather we all in detention because, like Hungani is saying, we don't have the capacity um, in our healthcare system to handle these kinds of, you know, cases and emergency and irresponsible behavior as a result of intoxication, let alone the fact that our doctors are working. I have friends who are doctors and they like literally working around the clock and hectic shifts and all that kind of stuff. And that's just next to the fact that now when you drink masks come off mm. people are dancing it's there are no protocols that are being observed it's just back to you know the way it was so i think from both of our sides i'm just like yeah with immediate effect because why you guys didn't know how to be normal yeah and i say you guys because my alcohol finished before the immediate effect <laughs> My wine finished. <laughs> my wine finished, and I was I was being very responsible here in my house with my glass. That was out. That was it. That was how I was living, you know. So, um, but yeah, mine finished in the first set of lockdown. That first twenty one days, my wow. stash finished, and I haven't even restocked since then. Even after it was lifted. Yeah, was but just I mean, like actually, he stash. Let me tell you guys, but he stash. It's not like he bought a stash for lockdown. His stash was a rem remainder of two years ago. <laughs> That's how long he then takes to finish any form of alcohol. I promise you, it's so funny. He even made this one time there was leftover. I think it was gin or I don't even know what it was. And he was like, he's making a cocktail or something. I and then, a punch. or a punch. And then he chopped up these water, like watermelon and fruit and whatever. And then he poured it in there. And I think he only had like one or maybe two glasses. Two glasses. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. I didn't have a bit because that's not my thing. I was like, if it's not wine, I don't want it. Yeah. And this poor punch then stayed in the fridge <laughs> for so long. I was like, listen, just throw that out because even the fruit is like going sour. So it's okay. You know what? I won't lie. That was a fail. I was like, if, it's not, if this is not you, it's fine. It's okay. Oh, wow, man. That is so funny. Then, Zobus, thank you so much for joining me on the show, man. And just in closing, uh, what advice would you give to young people out there who might use alcohol as a form of an escape from anxiety, depression, whatever the case may be? Um, I think first and foremost, to, to not feel like they're alone in that battle. Yeah. Um, there are many people that are if I can say struggling in silence, 
um, and I would encourage them to, instead of completely accepting that disorder in a sense or that thing that they're dealing with to actually seek help um, because there are ways in which you can deal with it there are ways in which you can maintain it there are ways in which you can live a very fruitful life regardless of what you're struggling with and I speak identifying with um, things like anxiety things like suicidal thoughts I speak identifying with those things it's not something that's foreign from me um, but yet relying on the bottle yes at some point was an option but very quickly I realized that that leads to a very, very um, terrible path. Um, and I would encourage you, whoever you are, regardless of what your family might say, what friends might say, or think that it's okay to actually seek help and to ask for help. There's nothing wrong with it. And in actual fact, your future self will thank you. Couldn't yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think that's the biggest thing. There's many things, but the biggest thing is to first... Uh, recognize it and you know take accountability for it because I think the first step is recognizing that there is a problem and for you it might be alcohol but for someone else it might be something completely different you yeah. know it might be every like everyone has a crutch that they that they lean on but you got to recognize that this is a crutch and rec and then ask yourself why is it a crutch mm -hmm. so that you can heal and then the next step is to reach out you're not alone ask for help go to all whatever the sites are, the phone calls, all that kind of stuff, and get help um, before it's too late. So, yep. Sorry. And also sometimes, like, the help might not be from that one place that you contact the first time, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have to feel it out and try different places because not every single um, organization or institution will kind of vibe with whatever energy synergy you know that whole thing that people say yeah. the, the the energy was not you know yeah, yeah the vibes so don't feel like oh i tried this place but ah they took two two days to respond like i need a place that's going to respond now like try a couple of places until you find a place that really works for you and and that that synergy wow, wow guys <laughs> i've learned so much thank you so much for taking time to join me today and uh, yeah. just in closing, next time one of you last us, please take a video and post it on the YouTube channel. Ah. <laughs> and never. <laughs> we can start it's a Lassa challenge. <laughs> I don't I, think you'll see that one. Eh? I don't think you'll see that one. Hey, that one is not our portion. Unfortunately, guys, you can give us a new challenge. We're open to whatever. But you see that one, uh, you won't find it. Yeah. All right. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Love you guys long time and all the best with everything that you're doing. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Sweet. Turns out you've been looking for many options when it comes to finding a person you can trust enough to open up to. Well, we care about your mental health. We are not only quite quick to reply to all your online messages, but when you send us, please call me to 083-323-1023. We are also quite quick to call you back. Some Fred, we got you. Hashtag mental health matters. Love life. Powering the future. So my last guest, uh, please welcome the Director of HIV Prevention Strategies at the National Department of Health, Dr. Tato. How are you, Dr. Tato? Good afternoon. I'm well, thank you. How are you? I am great, man. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us uh, today. And um, before we talk about the present, I just want to take you back a bit and ask, um, what um, would you feel should have been done during your time or what measures could have been put in place during your time uh, that could have helped with our generation when it comes to alcohol abuse? You know, what is happening now during lockdown because you wouldn't really say that there are no regulations. I mean, regulations are there. I just feel like in our time, there was a lot more fear of parents, of other adults, and of the law in general. So today, it seems like our young people are a lot more relaxed, and they, they're kind of somehow feel like they can do whatever they want. They get away with a lot. And I think even with the 
you know, the, the, the more relaxed, um, I would say we used to have corporal punishment. I'm not like an advocate of corporal punishment, but I feel like the, the, the way we actually manage young people now, it doesn't seem to be working, you know? It, it may not be us parents, but whatever we're doing doesn't seem to be working. So I think that's where we need to start. Where did we go wrong and what is it that we can do? We just need to go back to the basics where it really starts in the house, in the family, we are very busy parents now. We are you know, chasing a lot of things to try and make sure that the young people are the young people that they are. We keep them in those schools. We get them what they need. So there are a lot of dynamics, really. You can't really blame, um, you know, play a blame game per se, but we just need to go back to the basics and see what is it that we need to get together. I know you deal a lot with HIV prevention, but I just want to speak on alcohol a bit more. Do you think uh, young people have the capacity to handle alcohol? Well, um, I hope that's not a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. <laughs> um, as as a, a medical scientist, let me approach it from that corner. I think it's safer. We know that um, alcohol-related harm can actually be a lot more increased in young people as compared to adults, mainly because of science, biology. The brain keeps developing until you are basically in your mid-20s. So a developing brain does not need alcohol because it can actually affect just even the basic process of growing. And this is why you will find that young people even when you look at them, just a simple basic of managing drinking, it's, it becomes a problem. They are a lot more likely to forget. They are a lot more likely to lose their inhibitions. They are a lot more likely to do things that they are not supposed to do. Simply because they're still young, they really should be drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> and, and take away your professional hat for a second. On a personal space, personal capacity, what is your take on young people drinking? Are you for it or against it? What I usually say is that everything has a time. That's also what I used to be taught at school. I mean, in high school, we had a teacher that would tell you that there is time for alcohol, there is time for sex, there is time for marriage. There's nothing wrong with all these things. What is wrong is the time. So as I'm saying, the older you are, the wiser you are, and you're able to make informed decisions based on just the general fact that biologically you are you know, developed enough to make those decisions. So as a, a parent of teenagers myself, no, I wouldn't, um, I'm not really for, yeah, particularly teenagers actually, and you know, venturing into alcohol right now. I'm not against it per se, but when a person is as young as you would say, teenage into early 20s, I feel like they're, they're just really, they need to develop, they need to, you know, to focus on their education, to focus on their life, to focus on doing a lot of things. I mean, they can travel, they visit friends, they, the young people of today have a lot of opportunities. So I'm not trying to build like a straight and narrow kind of young individual, but I feel like we have time to do these things. We have the rest of our lives to do them. And speaking about sex, to what extent does alcohol impair decision making in terms of uh, preventing unwanted pregnancies and uh, possible HIV transmissions? So um, now, because inhibitions, as I have said, um, uh, particularly young people, even with adults, we still kind of like have that um, ability to lose our decision making, you know, do things that you wouldn't have done otherwise. As much as I wouldn't say blame it on alcohol per se, but there are some effects that one can get. So the ability to maybe not focus properly, because as I said, our brains actually do a lot for us. The thinking, the rationale, the reasoning, we, we use our brains for that. And if the brain is already kind of like inhibited by alcohol, then it becomes a problem. Like, should I do this? Maybe not. Because there's always that temptation of, no, let me not do this. But if one is actually inhibited in that manner, it affects behavior. So it's, it's really important that when one has to engage, especially in things like sex, it's better to be all there so that you can make informed decisions. 
100% totally agree. And in closing, what services are available for people at clinics in the event that, you know, they find themselves in alcohol vulnerable situations? So our facilities, we always have counseling services. We have mental health services. We have even psychology services. We have our youth uh, zones in some facilities that have youth zones. But even if there is no specific designation of a youth zone in a facility, but there is always support. There is always support for everyone, particularly young people, because remember that our young people are actually a priority within the department and in the country. These are the leaders of tomorrow. We don't want to be led by people that were inhibited 20 years ago <laughs> when they were 20. So, you know. We, yeah, we, we do have a lot of support. We have um, toll-free numbers. We have our implementing partners. We have Love Life. We have Soul City. We have all the partners that are able to support young people, refer them appropriately, but also public health facilities offer that support. Thank you so much, Dr. Tato. And uh, long may your fight against alcohol abuse, long may it continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there you have it, as promised, another roundtable in the bag. And uh, hopefully you learned a lot from your favorite celebrities. Uh, if you want to, you know, continue this conversation, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you're a new subscriber, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, my name is Mac G. I'm out of here. Big shout out once again to Love Life, uh, the Department of Health, BY's Soul City Institute. And yeah, keep rocking. Whatever you do, skalas. South Africa, we celebrate although not yet final during this lockdown. There is a delight in the overwhelming support from all you love lifers and the role that you have played thus far. Bantu Beitu and the world who are watching, a joyous time awaits the human spirit. Iskati Sogulilizela Asikogute. Bahayetu. Our new dawn urges us not to go back to our normal way of life, but rather that once the pandemic subsides and we grieve everyone and everything we have lost, we must, together and without delay, begin to build a better life. The youth have been chosen to lead our country into this new century, and as we begin to look towards the future and far into the horizon, we see the break of our dawn and in the distance can hear triumphant voices sing, Ngosi, Sigeleli Africa. We will continue to empower young boys to deal better with life's challenges. Morena, Boloka Sechaba Sayesu. The shadows of our singing voices draw closer and louder. Eight Diplofan on Sahirnal. And there, as we look up, Sia Kulisi, Trevor Noah, Zuzibini Tunzi, Shaw Majorzi, Chad Little, Casta Semenya, Dr. Nogukanya Kanyile, Gwen Nguenya, Gabsa the Small, our GBs and Mbenjis, amongst many other celebrities, Nami, Nawe, Songe and Anthem, sounds to call to come together. For, For this, this too is their achievement. achievement.